this product is and what it's used for. The majority. Mm -hmm. So Tylenol is a very uh, is a widely used product in the United States to usually um, just to alleviate pain sometimes. And I was wondering, what if I told you that Tylenol is only uh, available in the countries that are red? So as you can see, if you travel anywhere in the gray countries on my map, you won't be able to get Tylenol. So my question is, what do you do if you, let's say, go on vacation in China and you need something, you have a headache? So I, I conducted a survey and I asked people how would they uh, go about like finding the right medication for them if they were in a different country, that they didn't actually know the language. And about 57% of them told me that they would search the internet or use a dictionary. Some others said they would use English, but not everyone can speak English in other countries. So I thought that internet. So let's say I type and I Google painkillers in China. What do I get? I get, this is a screenshot of my Google research. And as you can see, there are some really uh, ambivalent kind of like results. All our blogs about from Lonely Planet, things like that. So I don't really know I trust this. I don't know. <laughs> so after, after like a couple of minutes, like a few minutes of searching, trying to find what's the best painkiller in China, I got this. I mean, I have nothing personal with China, but I have no clue what this says. <laughs> I don't know if uh, I trust this package. If I go somewhere, they give me take this, and there's nothing written on English on this package. I don't know if this is actually useful and if it's actually going to solve my problem and not cause any further problems. So this is equal to this in China. Um, so I guess I was kind of wondering to see how people uh, are reacting, like, like ask people about their previous experiences with traveling abroad and if they have ever faced that kind of problems. And 57% of the people I asked told me that they, ha they could not manage to obtain over-the-counter medication in a foreign country, mainly because they either did not know the language or they could not communicate with the people there. They didn't have a prescription or they didn't know something equivalent to that. So I was like, this is a problem. Um, it's dangerous. And then I asked local pharmacists here in the Lake Tahoe area and some pharmacies back home in Greece that get a lot of tourists. And I asked them how do they like how do they handle situations like that that they cannot communicate with their customers. And most of them told me that they are trying to resolve the situation with some kind of body language. So for instance, the customer would go there and would say, would do this. And I was like, does this mean I have a headache? Does this mean I have a migraine? These are completely different situations and require completely different solutions and medication for that. So how can I effectively find the best medication when I am abroad and I cannot really communicate with my pharmacist? My solution to that is to create an app called MedWorld which will be able to convert medication from one country to the other. This, uh, this app is targeted to international travelers and people that move from one country to the other. So this is a mock-up of my app and how it's going to look like. So you will be able to set up the program, the, the app on your native language and you'll be able to say, I have a fever. And right now I am in Greece. And you will get a list of suggested medication. And let's say your first result is uh, Panadol Greece. Other than just a, a simple description of what actually this medication does, you'll also be able to get how close is, is this medication to something that I already know. You'll get a list of comparisons. So for example, Panadol versus Tylenol. Then you'll also get different precautions and warnings like allergies, whether you need a doctor's prescription to get this. And then you will also be able to see how many people have actually used this product. So here you can see that, for instance, for this product, 1,000 people have liked this. And people can write reviews and read reviews to actually get some kind of insight of, is this actually working? Um, so I understand that this will require a very big amount of data. And how I'm planning to do this is by uh, hiring or asking uh, medical professionals like doctors or pharmacists to provide me all this information. And of course, I need some kind of credibility to my program. It has to be accurate. So I'm planning to have all these professionals from all over the world to, to send me their data. And I will build a, a database, collect all of this data, which will then go to my app. Um, 
also I understand that it's not as easy to tell doctors to give me their name for credibility and basically if something happens and if something goes wrong they will be uh, in a bad position. But how I'm planning to solve this is by offering them some space for advertisement on my app so that they can also get some kind of benefit out of it. For, uh, also, um, I'm planning to offer my app for free on the uh, iOS store and the reason for that is that I want to build a customer base and I don't want to benefit from people's pain. Um, and how I'm planning to gain revenue is by contacting different pharmaceutical companies and offering them the option to um, get priority on my suggested medication list and also advertisement space so that they can, um, uh, I can generate revenue. Finally, I'm planning to start small. So I'm uh, going to start my, uh, my app is only going to target tourists that visit Greece, because this is the, the easiest thing for me to do. And then if the project is successful, I'm planning on expanding in different other countries. Thank you. Questions? How, how do you plan to get your initial users on the app? Um, I'm planning to, well, I'm going to make something like a pilot version of my app and I will first give it to some of my friends and family back home that are uh, going to test this and see if there are any problems. Then I'm going to give it to different pharmacies back home in different islands that there are a lot of tourists and give, gain some feedback from that to see how they will respond to that. If I see that this is actually working, I will try and do some countries that um, so, I'm from Millbury College and there are a lot of students that study abroad, so I'm planning to give it to them and see how useful it will be. So then by word of mouth and by advertising, of course, I'm planning to spread it out. Okay. Seems like there's a last step. If I'm in China and I find the right alternative on your app, then I've got to go to the pharmacy and try to explain to them what I'm asking for, what I want, and make sure that what I actually buy that I can't read the label is the things that I want. <clears throat> how, how would you, how would this help me with that problem? Yeah, so how I'm planning to do that is that what you will get when you find like the details, you're not only going to get like, oh, buy this. Mm -hmm. You will get a very detailed description of what this product actually is. So you won't have to tell the pharmacy that, oh, can you give me something like a painkiller? You can just go there, show them the app, instead of trying and showing them how to figure out, like I have a headache or something like that, you will show them the icon in the app and there will be different images of the same product. So they will be able to tell and give you the right medication because you already know from the app that this is the right thing to take. In local language? Yeah, yes, of course, yeah. Is there any conflict of interest with your revenue stream being the farmers? Um, excuse me, can you repeat the question? So if the farmers are paying you, but you're purporting to make kind of neutral recommendations about what drug people should take, does that prevent, does that provide a conflict of interest? Yeah, I see. Um, no, because um, there are a lot of different, some, most of the times, there are a lot of different companies that create the same medication with some kind of differences, but still there are a lot of like options when you go to a country. Like back home, there's one medication, like there's medication for painkillers that's just only in Greece. People take that. There are, a lot of people take Panadol. So there are a lot of different options. So there's no, there's no like major risk in saying that if like a pharmaceutical company pays me like uh, way more than another one, I will put it right there. It's going to be, it's going to look like something like an advertisement and every suggestion will have how many doctors recommend this and how many doctors, what, how do they recommend like using this product? Do you know what happens if you're in China and do a Google search for, for pain meds versus searching pain meds in China from the United States? Yes, exactly. Um, so another problem that I was thinking about, with, especially when it comes to internet, is that you don't, um, not everyone has data, a data plan when you go abroad, you usually don't even have a mobile phone or you don't have access on a Wi-Fi. Here we think that I can just Google something and find it, but it's not as easy. So that's why I went on like doing the search and seeing like what exactly am I going to get if I did do this, I would do something similar. I imagine that I would get more local results, but at the same time, I would Google something in, in English. Like to find actually this product, I had to go on a, um, there was a list of like then similar medication from the FDA website, find the active ingredient, and then go on China 
type this in Chinese to find this product. I didn't find it in English. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, do you have one more question? Yeah, I do. Um, have any legal issues around providing advice? Yes. And how do you plan to <coughs> consider this? Yes. I understand that there's going to be a lot of risk associated with like having people suggesting people to take something, but uh, when it comes to suggestions, it will be very, very obvious on my app that take this, like, of course at your own risk, this is something that everybody does and every pharmacist tell you, like, it's up to me to say to my pharmacist that I have an allergy, I can't take this medication. This app will already tell you, if you have an allergy or if you have a history of like diabetes, you're not, you should not take this medication. Always be careful. And I understand that there's a risk of like getting fined or getting lawsuits from people that are just like, oh, I used your product, you suggested this, and I'm mad, but I'm planning to resolve this by um, hiring medical professionals that work specifically on these areas and know exactly how to deal with situations like that and make sure that the product um, is safe. And it's very clear to my audience that this is only for small trips abroad. It's nothing, cr it's nothing, it's nothing to train, like nothing to treat chronically, it's just something very specific. For a few days when you are abroad and you have a simple headache or a fever, you can use my app to find a solution. Thank you, Stella.